days. Hey! I'm Mr. O, here with another oh, wow! moment at the Children's Museum of Houston. Warning. What is that? That's our leech, Edward Cullen. That's right, I went there. Or Eddie the leech for short. Why do you have a leech in a bowl? You're not gonna keep it as a pet, are you? No, Eddie here's the star of our brand new exhibit. Attack of the Bloodsuckers. You, gross. Why would you want to do an exhibit about slimy slug things? Well, first, leeches aren't slugs. They're segmented worms, distant relatives of the earthworm. And second, leeches are important for the environment as well as in medicine. I thought that using leeches in medicine went out with the Middle Ages. Well, in terms of basic bloodletting, you're absolutely correct. But recently, leeches have made a reemergence in medicine, especially in the use of plastic and reconstructive surgeries. Here, let me show you. Whoa. This is Haruto medicinalis, the medical leech, like Eddie. At either end of the leech is a suction cup-like structure that, in combination with mucus, holds the leech onto the host during feeding. In the head, you can see it has three jaws inside the suction cup, each with about 80 very tiny teeth. When the leech feeds, it releases an anesthetic so the host doesn't feel the feeding, and an anticoagulant called harudin that prevents the blood from clotting. And the harudin is what makes the leech useful in medicine. In reconstructive surgeries, blood may not flow properly through a part of the body. This results in a dangerous swelling of the tissue and may cause clots to form, preventing fresh blood from entering the affected area, causing serious damage. A leech will help drain excess blood from the area and, simultaneously, inject the harudin anticoagulant preventing the clots. These two things together can save the affected area from damage and allow it to heal. I get it. So we use leeches natural feeding to help drain excess blood and prevent clots. Exactly. But what does it feel like to actually have a leech feed on you? Well, let me show it to you a different way. Normally I encourage you to try science activities at home, but this time you might just want to watch me do it. In the wild, leeches sense vibrations in the water to attract them to potential food sources, then use smell and taste sensors to determine if it is something they want to eat. But in this case, we're gonna drop Eddie right onto my arm. As you can see, he wanders around a little bit, trying to find the right place to latch on. Once he latches on, I really don't feel much, just a little bit of itching, as he does secrete an anesthetic that helps numb the affected area. So what do you do if you get a leech on you unintentionally? You can use a thin card, like a credit card, to pry up the sucker attached to the head, the narrow end. This will cause the leech to release the bite. Then use the card to pry up the suction cup on the other end and flick it away before it can bite and reattach again. Once removed, the cut will bleed a little bit more than normal because of the Harudin anticoagulant. Initially, use gauze pads and tape to stop the bleeding. Once done, apply some antibiotic ointment and a bandage. It should heal quickly, within a few days. Some sources say you should use flame, heat, salt, lemon juice, vinegar, sodas, etc. to get a leech to let go. That's not a good idea as these traumatize the leech. This may cause the leech to throw up into the wound, increasing your chance of infection. Of course, if you're a patient, you can just wait for the leech to eat its fill after which it will naturally just drop off. This has been another Oh Wow moment from the Children's Museum of Houston. We hope your mind can come out to play. <laughs>